Going. Guys, what's up? It's John, Gamester81. I'm here with my good friend Jeff, and we're going to talk about... Hey, what's up, Jeff? What's up, Jeff? We're going to talk about Switch controlling. Cheers, man. I got my uh, Advent calendar beer I'm drinking here. Hell yeah, drink some beer. Drink some beer. <laughs> Dude, so every day. Are you familiar with this Advent calendar? Beer calendar thing? Real quick? Oh, of course. I have a Lego Advent calendar I do with my daughter. This is just like getting Legos every day, but you get beer. Yeah, it's German beer. So anyway... Enjoy. Oh, amazing. It. Enjoy. It's pretty amazing. Germans make great beer. I'll say that. But yes, uh, they do. I've, I lived in Germany for a few years. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Switch, man, and uh, kind of, kind of reminiscent a little bit of collecting for old school retro games. In my opinion, what do you think? Yeah. So basically, the collecting for the Switch right now to me feels like cartridge collecting back in the day, and it's like an amalgamation of the NES and Super Nintendo like combined into one. It's, right. it's really it's really rad actually. Yeah, not only that, but a lot of the games also are kind of in the same retro style as well, like the Messenger and games like that too. But no, absolutely and you know, I just love the the physicality of it all. It's just having a cartridge even though it's you know, the kind of a disc, a little bit different, but I mean I love it. I think it. you made up an awesome term there. What's that? The physicality, right? I, I can't physical, even do it right. The physical, that's amazing. Physicality, I don't know, the physical, is that even a word I even know? Maybe it's a German I, beer. I think, I think we made up a, a gangster term. Yes, I like it. yes. It's I like a German it. beer talking, I don't know what to tell you. It's a German beer the, term. The no, German it's beer. a gangster 81. <laughs> no, but it's not the physical, term. you know the, You know what I mean though, the physical cart. Um, yeah, absolutely. The, the, you know, the actual... I can't even say it without physicality. It's, just, it's now. something you got different me. about you got me. <laughs> it's something different to be like a cart or a disc. You know what I'm saying? Like CDs yeah, are yeah, great yeah. and discs are great, but just having that cart and just to me, the switch is very I don't know retro friendly. It just makes me feel like I'm, I'm collecting retro games again. I mean, in my opinion, yeah, it's just having a, the little cartridge that you can put in the system, um, and then the fact is is that you have releases of Night Trap on the system, Wonder yeah. Boy and Monster Land on the system. Yep. I mean, you have your Zeldas, your Marios, because it's Nintendo. But also, I just saw they're releasing Toki on the system. Like, Toki's the eighth platformer from okay. the NES right. and in the arcades. Really? Like, they're doing a lot of old school systems, yeah. old school franchises on the system. Yeah. And there's companies like Limited Run. Now, granted, <laughs> they've done stuff, obviously, for the places before and for Vita prior, and they still do that. But uh, I think it's really cool. And there's other companies that do it as well kind of limited versions of games, like indie games for the Switch. It's just smart. So, interestingly enough, um, it feels to me that we're getting better quality out of these smaller companies, like Limited Run Games and Super Rare Games, and even Play Asia right. doing their own exclusives, where you get the actual case with the cartridge, you open it up, the inside of the case has artwork, beautiful artwork, and you get a Nintendo style manual in there. Right, right. The manual. And that's then, a lost and then thing, you man. Get your, and then you get your GameStop exclusives, and I'm getting like Dragon Ball Fighters, and I open it up, and it's blank on the inside with right, the manual. Right, right. And I'm like, really? The manual is a lost art, man. You don't see. <clears throat> they got rid of manuals in a lot of these games, modern games, and it kills me. <clears throat> you know, they at least have a reversible cover. You know, they got Sonic Mania, and you can at least kind of do the Genesis reversible cover. You know, so yeah, but what was the original release of Sonic Mania, John? It was I even got it's the giant <coughs> one with oh the, the Genesis, Genesis with, yeah Sonic on top, and then there's no game in it. There's no game, right? Yeah, it comes <laughs> with a, no game in it. Comes with a card. <laughs> yeah, it's like weird. Yeah, and they finally figured out their mistake and then re-released yeah. it with a definitive edition. When didn't come out with a retro type game like that, and you don't have a retro physical game to go with it, it's a marking blunder for sure. Well, and I think it is a, a big sticking point with smaller developers because the first thing that you will be asked if you say, I, I'm bringing Sydney Hunter to the Switch. Are you doing a physical cartridge, John? That's the first thing people are if going to ask you. If I had you. a dollar for every time, if I had a penny for every time I heard that, I'd be a millionaire. Every You'd time. Be a millionaire. Yeah, yeah. And the answer is yes, we will be doing a hopefully a Switch. I'm saying hopefully. Depending on how sales go. Yeah. It's just very, very expensive to do that. I mean, to do... I can understand... I, I, would say, I would say a better way to phrase it would be, that's your goal. That is our goal. If people want to support it, that's your goal. That's our goal. And you could even do a crowdfunding. Hey, you want this physical on the Switch? Here's what it will cost us. Here's the Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah. Like, 
We do have the good news is we do have connections in a distributor in China. We have a distributor in, in <clears throat> Europe, and then we have someone here in the states. Awesome. So we do have the connections for it. We'll just see if it, if all the the cards line up and how it stacks and how it falls. I guess you know. Well, and how it sells, too. And how it like, sells. How it sells. Like, I mean, I was on your panel with you at um, Game On with Sydney Hunter and the, the version that will inevitably go on the Switch, and it was excellent. Like, the game has the it factor. <laughs> so it'll be, it, it should be able to stand out among the bulk well, I appreciate you saying that, yeah. Bulk I, that's going on the Switch. Not now. to get off too far off topic here, uh, but I read an article, and it kind of made me a little nervous, and it read some... Basically mentioned that 93% of the indie games, and this is for the Steam, granted, not the Switch, but Steam. Yeah. Uh, 93% of the games that come out for Steam fail uh, in the sense that they're not able to make enough money to cover their losses, right? So so, so let's, let's analyze that comment, though. So 93% of games, right? 93%. So we're not talking about 93% of games developed by a game studio. We're talking 93% of games, they and just come out. I could throw a game on there that I created in a weekend. Right. No, there's a lot of shovel work. Yeah, a lot of, sh- lot of crap games. Like, there's, it's the quality bar. So basically, if you go on there, you promote, it'll be fine. I've seen Nintendo games thrown into a, a wrapper just putting the NES ROM and it's been successful right. on Switch at least getting greenlit successful. well Nintendo's very picky and this is going back on the Switch topic but Nintendo I can tell you very picky a very picky who they select to approve to go on the Switch I know I've talked to other developers who games are great and they deserve to be on the Switch that Nintendo won't get back to them which is a shame so really? I consider myself ourselves very lucky to be approved for the Switch which is great um and we'll see. I would love to do a physical game, but going back to the collecting thing, I mean, absolutely, I do want to do a, a, a collector's version of Sydney Hunter. It would be awesome to do a collector's version. So that is an interesting aspect, and, um, like, you're talking collector's versions. What do you think about all the collector's versions that are coming out in the Switch? I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. think it's cool? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's. I think it's, well, it depends on what game you're talking about. <laughs> You know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I've seen... My thing is, is that it's almost too good. Yeah, it's like overboard. You know what I mean? Like, collecting for it is almost... It's almost to the point where... Because I'm OCD. I have a little right, bit of OCD. Right. Like, anybody knows my projects that I work on and things. I'm a little bit OCD. Right. And so when I see something that I enjoy, and I'm a selective collector. I mean, I got a Nintendo wall that's like my favorite games. Neo Geo games that are my favorite games. Not every right. game. But, like, there's so many good games right now. My wife's, like, keeps on seeing... Ga- I, you keep on getting more Switch games. And I'm like, well, they all look like games I would enjoy. Right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's it's really cool. But it's dangerous. And with all these limited coming out, I think it's going to be very interesting to see if the market can sustain because a lot of stuff's getting released. We'll see what the, the second-hand value of these games are later down the road. Right? Will they... Very will true. they sell for more what they got pit bought for, or will they, you know, how will they they do? What's what's going to be the demand for these down the road, you know? But yeah, because because we all know that collecting, if people collect it from the onset, mm-hmm. it won't be worth as much as if nobody really wanted it, and then like Nintendo boxes that were cardboard and we all threw them out as mm-hmm. kids, and now it's collectible. Well, collectible is something that nobody thought to collect, and then it's... One thing we're talking about doing is doing a limited edition soundtrack on vinyl for Sydney Hunter. You kind of talk, we talked yeah. about that offline a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's ironic. The digital sound going on a vinyl, old school platform, but vinyl's huge right now, and... Uh, I, Sounds like a future episode, Yeah, it does sound like a future episode we can talk about. <laughs> but no, I mean, so I think it depends on what the limited edition includes. Uh, is it just... Uh, a different color case, or is it like how limited is it too, right? Because I know that's been well, and then you have your level of collector, so you're thinking like I gotta have every single Switch release, I gotta have every limited sure. edition, I have to have every limited edition with every piece of that limited yeah. edition, including if Sydney Hunter does a set of six different collectible cards that you put one in each each limited edition, and then I gotta get all six cards, yeah. like. That's it, it's where things get a little crazy. I think what we'll do is like we've been talking about kind of doing some maybe some patches like old school patches like Activision used to do and like old school um, 
but you have to earn them. You know, there's send away send patches. Away. I love yeah, it. send away. There's there's a screen on the game that has all of our initials. It's an Easter egg. It has all our initials on it. So the idea is you have to yeah. take a picture of like of you in front of the screen because otherwise you can just copy and paste the picture. But you in front of the screen and you have to send you know post on social media and we'll 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 contact you, send it to you, kind of deal. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Because not only is that awesome, but then it also markets the game because people will be talking right. about it. There's a ton of Easter eggs in this game. I'm telling you, there's a ton. Ton of Easter eggs. Hopefully people like can find that Easter egg and start participating because, I mean, my thing is, is I think having an old school earnable reward would be amazing. Right. Yeah. Old school. That's yeah. cool. Um, yeah, so I, I really feel like there's been a huge focus on retro when it comes to the switch it'll be interesting to see if that continues because it's it's hot right Mm -hmm. now you know what i mean it's the trend that's why we have our nes and super nintendo classics that are hugely Mm -hmm. popular now if that ever dies down will the switch die down or will it continue to boost up because we also have the modern ports Mm -hmm. That are that are excellent as well. I mean, the version of Doom on the Switch is awesome. Yeah. So like that could help carry the market as well. Yeah, I think I think really the Switch has really carved a nice little niche for for indie games to be honest. And um, yeah, I know I just read somewhere the other day. I think they've sold as many uh, Switches as they've had the original GameCube. I think at this point, so not nearly as yeah. close as the original Wii, right? Because uh, that was not yet. Not yet anyway, because the Wii just did hotcakes for them. But we'll see. I think it's doing okay for Nintendo. I mean, they needed something. I mean, uh, the Wii U was just a letdown. Let's be let's be honest. The Wii U was a joke, in my opinion. It, it was it was sad. Like nobody really adopted it, and it was a huge the, miss. I I feel like the Switch is what Nintendo wanted sorry, the Wii to be initially. Exactly. Just the tech was yeah because there. they had the when I first heard about the Wii U, they had you know like oh this controller sounds really cool with the tablet. Like you should be able to take that to go and yeah. and play games and. No, that wasn't the case, and the battery life sucked, and you know, <laughs> you know. So there's that, but not to say th- can't even take it to the toilet right. with you. What yeah, are you yeah, thinking? exactly, <laughs> exactly. There's some good. I mean, Mario Maker is like my fi- one of my favorite Mario games that came out for the the Wii U, right? So Mario yeah, Maker, awesome. awesome. But so there's some good games for the system, but overall, as far as like terms, of Nintendo, uh, it's probably one of my least favorite Nintendo consoles. Even I love the Virtual Boy. <laughs> but I, I'd say it's even worse than the Virtual Boy, uh, you know, as far as what people consider it being a bad console for Nintendo. But my opinion, gonna gonna have to eventually do a Virtual Boy something or other release for me. Virtual Boy Mini, let's make it happen. Let's <laughs> let's, Virtual let's Boy make Mini. it happen. Virtual Boy Mini. I don't know how you do it. I don't know what you do. <laughs> how do you market? But you can put the whole library on there because what? There's only 15 or 17 games. You know, yeah, so people wouldn't complain about oh that game's not on there. Like you get the PlayStation Classic, right? You'd be like that game's on there, dude. You have the complete library. Yeah, you have the whole library. It's everything. Now people will still find something they to would. complain about. They it would be okay. <laughs> I mean, but that's at least have like um, um, when did the Virtual Boy come out? Like uh, I'm trying to think what year. I can't even think what year it came out. What year did the Virtual Boy come out? I want to say it was in it was in ninety eight ninety. Was no 95, 95. 96, 96 sounds I'm right, a, but I think 96 is when I got it for $25. I want to say it came out in 95, us. okay? So we're we're approaching, yeah. what, in a couple years? Right before the Nintendo 64 is when I got my personal one, and my mom went and got it from KB Toys. It was, I still have it on my original box, a red pen marked out and wrote twenty four ninety nine okay. on mine. So a couple years, 2020 will be the 25th anniversary. For the Virtual Boy, yeah. Let's Nintendo. If you are listening, let's make this happen. Let's let's at least have a compilation game for the 3DS, right? Play that would work. Yeah. So, anyway, let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> or or do it on the yeah, Switch and do a limited limited edition like we're talking about. Do it. Do a limited edition Switch 3DS uh, a Virtual Boy compilation. So one question I yes. have for you, John. And this is something that the viewers are probably... They, they might also be thinking the same thing, not off of this video, but like about the Switch and about collecting. I get to a point now where I hold off on games, which includes The Messenger, which I know is Ninja mm-hmm. Gaiden on crack, mm-hmm. and then 
amazing. I know I'm going to love it, but I'm waiting because there's a rumor of a physical copy mm. coming out, so I haven't supported the digital copy. I wonder how many other people are in that boat I, where it's kind of hard to commit to a digital download when there's a high probability that these amazing titles are going to be released. So I, I will say this, and I think you and the majority of people are probably in the same boat here. But on the other side yeah. of the fence, as a publisher and a developer, I can tell you if, if yeah. ironically, if people don't support the digital games, you will never see a physical release. So my advice, if you do want to see a physical release... Support the game digitally, and then buy the game physically because it's going to be—it's different. Double dip. Double dip. Double dip. So I would say, from the collector perspective, or from the just a game player perspective, you got to go the Sonic Mania route with the physical mm -hmm. release, where there's some extra content that wasn't originally available in the Absolutely. digital. Which, as a developer, that can't be easy. No. But you're right. You, you got to make it different. Then, it, then it get then you get a little bit of the the right. draw. You got to make it different. You got to make it different for sure. So or maybe like like in our case, maybe we'll do like a. Although I, I do hate doing kickstarters. I know you're a big fan of kickstarters, but I hate doing kickstarters because they are stressful <laughs> of all get out. You know, but uh, no, no, don't don't get me wrong. Kickstarter is a job. It is. In it, it is. It is. And but it, there's no marketing like it the, like going to mm -hmm. crowdfunding and having people support and it's awesome seeing support from amazing, everyone. Amazing. Amazing. But what's what's frustrating uh, it it's is stressful, stressful because <laughs> like for a game Justice Beaver it's been in development for years. We did Indiegogo years ago and we're still working on it and we're you know it's great and it, it, we're fine but it's been taking forever and it's not my fault it's not yeah. anyone's fault it, the you know it's just bad circumstances the programmer gets sick or the programmer moves away or or whatever. And it happens, and then they get people get frustrated, and understandably so. So you have that stress of it all, you know. Even though our intentions are to release it, and we will release it, but you know how that goes. Things get delayed, and it's just frustrating. Well, fortunately, in your case, your company, Collector Vision Games, has a track record of releasing something. Yeah, that's true. So people know that it's going to yeah. come out. Whereas if you were an unproven right. developer, people would lose hope. They would get yeah. angry, nervous. Um, but with yours, they're going to know that they're going to get a high quality product That's in true. the future. That's true. Um, and with a lot of crowdfunding, it is the idea that you're That's supporting. True. Um, in my own track record, I've released nine, ten books now. So, um, you know, it's the book will come out. It's just there's hiccups yeah. here and there that happen where it's stuck in customs or it had to be QC'd a second time because it has. we have to make sure that it's a high that's quality true. product yeah, that's coming out. And in the end, if the ends justify the means, like it is an excellent product, people, that's it right. won't yeah, matter yeah. how long it That's where kind of where we're at with it, too. Like, yeah, we could probably come out with it for next month, but it'd be a, you know, or earlier, we could release it a long time ago, but it would have been a half assed product and probably not a very good game. Yeah, and people would have been, no I think, more pissed in the long run, opposed to waiting for a quality product, you know, so. You know, and this goes all the way to mm -hmm. Switch collecting and into releasing things, is that, um... In the end, you create your own mm -hmm. legacy. And so, like, Collector Vision Games, when they release Sydney Hunter or Justice Beaver or on the Switch Sydney Hunter or whatever you release, it's mm -hmm. your legacy. You're putting your mm -hmm. name on it. So it's the same thing, like, when game developers for the Switch release their items with a white in the inside of the case. That's their legacy for their game release. That's part of that library that people will likely collect right. in the future. So now it's just a bland, oh, yep, yeah, this is a BS right. release. Like, um, I got a game, it was, um, it showed up randomly, it's called Cat's okay. Quest. Showed up randomly at GameStop <laughs> with no fanfare. Um, I just saw it because yeah. I was going through on, in the mall on Black Friday, and um, it's a Zelda for the Switch? Game. And I opened it up white. Uh. Yeah, it's for the Switch. It's for the Switch. And um, a lot of Switch games have that nomenclature of being released as a mm -hmm. Steam game or as a mobile game beforehand. And then they do a Switch release and you have that Switch markup, mm -hmm. um, which you're paying like 30 right, bucks for a game yeah. instead of the right. $10 download. Yeah. Um, but like that game released white on the inside. And it was just like, I was like, man, you have this awesome opportunity to leave your legacy with a Nintendo Switch system, and the publisher right, goes right. bare bones on it. It's like, spend the extra... If you can, yeah, exactly. if you can go physical, you got to make it... I mean, that's what our plans are. If we do physical, 
or when we do physical <coughs> fishing hunter, we want to make it quality. We want to make it something worth. We want, we want it to be a display piece in someone's gaming collection that they're gonna be like, this game is legit. You know, it's gonna come with some really cool items. That's our goal. So because I mean, face it, we're, we're collectors as well. You know, we're gamers, so we 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 right. Well, you are collector vision. <laughs> But but in the end, it's like, why wouldn't you spend the extra cents to print on the inside of the cover when you're charging the switch market right, anyways right, for most of these companies? Absolutely. Like, and that's the thing that you all will do, and hope more indie indie developers do is that you will go all out with these releases, and then it makes it feel like we're mm-hmm, collecting mm-hmm. back in the day, and there's so many just knocking yeah. it out of the park. I mean, you have in Europe even signature edition games. There was a really virtually unknown game hmm. called Slain, which felt like a 16-bit with 32-bit graphics style action platformer where it's really gory and there's blood everywhere and it has a heavy metal style atmosphere. And I, it was a hidden gem, but then signature, signature edition mm. games made it a release. Hmm. So now more people know about it, but not everybody, but yeah. more people know about it. Really cool, cool, though. That really cool. cool. Awesome. Good stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. So let's hope that the Switch continues on this. Let's, yeah, let's hope so. Trend, right? Yeah, got to support Nintendo for sure. So Exactly, and let's ride let's that freaking wave. <laughs> All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon, man. <laughs> Take care. Bye.